flying so many things loud today. No, please don't, because then I'm going to turn it up and walk. Oh, my, or the office will probably be calling my name in about five to seven minutes. Okay, all right. Because my mom has to bring me money for this. Today, here's, here's what we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to go through exponents, we're going to go through the exponential form, we're going to evaluate exponential form, uh, and the reason I'm doing that is that I want to make sure that you understand how to type your calculator, what it is, and then it's going to lead into the subject that we talked about yesterday, which was compound and simple interest. Uh, I do want to have that, you know, kind of in our, uh, in our mind, leading into Monday. Monday we're going to be graphing uh, equations. Doing something. What was that? Annie's doing something. Okay. <laughs> something very good. Sound, doesn't sound mysterious at all. Alright. Um, okay, let's talk about exponential form. Alright. Okay. What's up? Exponentials. The thing you should know up till this point is, you know, terms like this. This is what we talked about last time. This is an exponential. It's in the exponential form because it has um, items that have you know powers. Now let's talk about some of the vocabulary we did yesterday. Number out front. The leading coefficient. Okay, and what is it? One. One. Okay, that is the leading coefficient. It's the number out front. That number is important when you add or subtract these things together or multiply, because that's what you do, right? Um, what's the x called? Variable. Heard it? Base. Base or variable. Variable. And. The power? That's a power. Power or exponent. Okay, so those are the parts. Now, the thing that I want you to know is, you know, uh, if we add things together, right? If I took x, plus, uh, x to the fifth plus 4x to the fifth, you know, that makes 5x to the fifth. Okay, the reason being, you actually add the leading numbers out front. That's how you add or subtract. That was something you did in algebra 1, algebra 2, when you combine like terms. When you multiply, that's completely different. When you multiply, now you're multiplying the numbers up front, which makes 4, and then the x's, you tack them in the back, and that makes 10 x's total. Okay? Uh, that's the difference between multiplying and adding and subtracting. Okay, is there any questions with the difference between adding and multiplying? And no, sir. Okay, now, the, the next thing. What is the definition of a power of 5? Look, what does it mean? Uh, times times times. There you go. How so, many x, yeah, it's how many x's are in a row, they're all being multiplied together. This, what you're looking at, that's called expanded form. Whoa. It's actually the definition of an exponent. It's, so, uh, there is there's five there. Um, but you multiply them all together, whatever they are. Now, the reason why I bring that definition up is that's actually how you evaluate um, exponentials. So, if I had, you know, 3 to the power of 2 like what we did yesterday. That means you have, uh, the definition of exponent means you have two of the bases. So, in expanded form, this means three times three. That you have two of the bases, which is none. Okay, is there any questions with um, exponentials, like expanded form, like the definition of how to evaluate? This is something that most people know how to do. It's very, very simple. Most people know how to type it in a calculator. Um, but I want to talk about what you should have learned in algebra 2, what you should have learned maybe algebra 1, maybe, uh, and how that's going to tie into the new stuff. Because obviously, we haven't really got to the more difficult step yet. I've been just kind of helping you review things you should know up till this point. Um, uh, one of the things that I want you to know before we move on is, is basically, you know, with the power system. Something like this. What does that mean? Yeah, well, what does the first power mean? Three times one. Yeah, it's three, just one of them. Okay. Uh, three to the second power, like we did here. Three times three. Three times three, which is not. Three to the third. Three times three. Okay, all right, so it's kind of repeating, you know, expanded form, and this makes 27, right? I'm evaluating numbers. The problem that, um, that I always see, and most people are very comfortable keep going, um, that's not the problem that most people have. It's actually going the other direction. Three to the zero. What? Zero. One. one. Now, let's talk about why. And just like I heard, because a lot of people go, oh, it's zero. Oh, it's one. Here's the reason. When you go back levels, when you go back levels, yeah, you divide by the base number. So from here going back, you divide by the base, because there's three of them multiplied together. So if I'm going to take one away, I have to divide it off. 
because that's the opposite of what they're doing here. So if I take 27 and divide by 3, that's the base, I get 9. And then go to the next level, I divide by 3, the base. So I take 9, divide by 3, and I get 3. Well, that's what happens when I go back up. What do I have to do? Divide by 3. Yeah, I divide by 3, and that's why the answer is 1. What about 3 to the negative 1? Is that 1 divided by 3? Okay, so 3 to the negative 1. <coughs> You take you take the previous answer and you divide by three, right? One over which is one over three, which is one third of point three. The reason being is that when you move up levels, okay, when you move up levels, you have to divide by whatever the base is, and that actually explains a lot from algebra two why you have powers. How is that? <laughs> Where are you going? Are you coming back? No. Well, oh my gosh, you're back. Right. I have a game. Now. Okay. Okay. Um, so, the negative power means that um, you're dividing by the previous numbers and dividing by the previous base. Uh, uh, and that's why I get one third. Now, the other reason that they explain in algebra 2, they kind of do this little hint where, you know, if I had 3 to the negative 2, uh, one of the shortcuts that they teach you is how to deal with negative exponents. So that, um, what this actually means is that you make this a fraction to begin with, and when it has a negative power, you move these items to the bottom of their fractions, or opposite. So they go to the opposite side. That's what they explained probably in algebra 2. So like this negative, uh, when it has a negative power, it moves. So it would join the 1 on the bottom, and it would be 3 squared. And when you move it, the power becomes positive. And then since there was nothing left on the top, you just put a 1 up there. And so this actually turns out to be 3 squared, which is 9. And you take 9 times 1 over 1, which, um, which is 1 over 9. Because the 1 times 9 is just 1. Okay, so that's, that's, what, that's what happens when you have negative powers. Well, it's actually from this. You're actually taking the previous fraction, since I'm going to negative 2. You're actually taking the previous thing, which is 1 third, and you're dividing by 3. Um, and how you do that, uh, what they teach you in number two, you multiply by its reciprocal, which is 1 over 9. So that's actually the reason why you're taking this answer and dividing by another base. So is it just so. all of that, it's all the positive ones, just a 1 over top of it? Basically. That's wow. another way to think about it. Okay. Is that how it goes for every term? Uh, yeah, every, every term. <coughs> all right, now, the reason why I bring that up, and I know that seems silly that we're reviewing something from algebra 2, is because in this section, there's one particular problem that I know that some people have not seen. And it's a problem like this. Okay, so it's going to be like 9 to the... Yep. Okay, so now we have, we have fractions for powers. Not just negative number, not just positive numbers, but fractions. What most people don't understand is the shortcut. There's actually multiple ways to attempt to evaluate that problem. Um, I want to show you, you know, a couple different ways you can attempt it. Because if you learn these different methods, it actually makes your later sections a lot easier. Um, so here's one, here's one of the methods. And this is actually the definition of a, of a power that's a fraction. The top number, the numerator, that top number is your exponent. This is your exponent on that number. Okay, whatever's the basis. That's that your exponent. Okay. How many times do you do it? No. This number. This denominator number, this is the radical that you're going to put on it. So oh. when they have fractions, it's actually a, it's actually a root of some type. Oh. So, so it's 9 to the first power, right? That's the power, that's the exponent on the 9. And then the, the 2 is the actual radical I'm doing, which is actually the square root. Oh my God. Uh, I'll tell you. So 9 to the first, 9 to the first is 9, and then you're going to take the square root of it, which is 3. Okay, so that's, that's the actual answer. That's the evaluation of 9 to the half power. Now, the reason why we go halves um, is it's a shortcut for typing calculators. It's actually a really easy way to do any type of radical. So if I ever had to do, like, let's say, 4 to the 7th root, some people don't have that button on their calculator because most calculators have a square root key. Or um, some, um, some calculators I've seen actually have, like, a, a radical that has an X on it. Does anyone have that? Okay, if you have that, here's how you do the seventh root with that, um, other than cheating using fractions. Um, you put a, you type in seven, you type in this little square with the X key, 
Then you type in the number on the inside because what your calculator will do is it will put the stat in here for the average. So 1.2? Like, what is so, oh, this? What the heck? <laughs> is this the same thing as that? Okay. What? Can you tell me? What? Is this the same Oh, is this I that? Yeah. yeah, it's one point two. So, <laughs> question? Uh, I think it's one point two something. Let's see. Yeah, it should be somewhat. Yeah, but I do. What? Oh. Yeah, I think you have to hit the math button. I'll show you the math. And then um, it'll be math. It'll be math. Okay. So, all right, now, most people have that. This is a kind of a shortcut for doing radicals if they're, if they're really random. Or you can cheat and just do the thing I just taught you. The other way to cheat this problem is to, instead of you know doing this, where you actually use that, you know, that radical with a little x, because maybe you don't have that, you can put the power on the 4, the number on the power 4 is a 1, and then the radical is the 7. And that's actually how you can cheat that problem. So what you can do is you can type in the number 4, you find the little caret key, or um, some people have like an XY key, or um, it's like something where you put powers, and then you just type in parentheses 1 divided by 7 in that parentheses. And what it will do is it will put the 1 7th in the power, which is the 7th root. So that's an actually a quick way to do radicals if you don't have that button. So that's the, it would be 4 to the 1 7th power. 1 7 power. And that means the same thing as what you're all doing. So this is how Okay, does that oh, make sense? So that's the more difficult way. This, I actually prefer this, especially for like Allie's calculator. It's, it's actually faster because that little carrot symbol is above the 9 key for her. It's actually easier to get to this button than it is to get to this square root thing. So it's just putting it to... Yeah, it's putting it to the one seven right. power. And it's a way to like quickly evaluate radicals, and that's actually why we have fractions. I'm always surprised when some people like go to Calc 1 or Calc 2 and they've never seen this. It makes radicals a lot easier to calculate. I um, mean, it's quick. It's a, it's a really fast approximation for it. Okay, um, is there any questions with what I've just done here? Now, the one thing I wanted to talk about, other than you know just doing what we're doing here, is what happens when they have different numbers other than you know one seventh or one half? What happens when they have something like this? Three halves. Now you really have to understand what that is telling you. That's telling you that we're doing nine to the third power with a square root on it. Okay, now before you start typing the calculator, I'm gonna show you how to do this by hand. Because some people are like, okay, nine to the third is seven hundred and twenty nine, I'm gonna try to the square root. Too much work. Okay. You can do it by you can do it with your head without with the calculator, okay? Because it doesn't actually matter when you put the power of three on. In fact, here's the shortcut that you could have done over here. I could have just put the power of three on the outside, and then it actually makes the answer easier. You can take the square root first, then put it to a power of three. Okay, so square root of nine. Three, and you're putting it to the third power, which is twenty seven. And that is the same answer as doing 9 to the third first, which is 729, then taking the square root, which is 7. So it's actually the same thing. So you could do 9 carrot 2 divided by 3. <coughs> 2 divided by 3? That's what you... 3 divided by 3? Oh, yeah. Like, if I just hit, like, 9 squared, and then I can go back to my, like, squared and just type in. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's a quick way to do it. Oh, I would just use a carrot, put the parentheses, and just go three divided by two. That's what I would do. I don't have, I don't have to do anything. No. That's like, nice. Make it really small. Because huh. well, you have a newer calculator, I know mine, that's kind of like yours, can't do that. Oh. Um, those are the newer ones, are, they allow the, like, the little fraction thing mm -hmm. you can do, which is kind of nice. Oh, um, now, okay. does everyone understand the whole fraction power yes, thing? Yes, sir. Okay. But, 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 but. There is a completely other way to do these problems. I want to show you different approaches, right? We can do radicals with the calculator. We can do this type of thing where we can kind of cheat by putting the power on the outside. But here's the other way to look at this problem. And this, for some people, they're like, oh, that makes total sense why we learn certain things in algebra 2. We can actually do this problem like this. What is 3 halves the same as? Like the, the, this um, improper fraction, one and a half, one and a half right? All right. So now this is going to rely on our um, on our um, on our law of exponent idea. That one and a half is actually the same as one plus half, right? That's what it's the same as. Well, when you have powers that are being added together, that's because you did some math that was like this, where the bases were the same 
And when you multiply together, you actually multiply the numbers out front, which if there is any. And when you have the variables, you just add the powers, right? Because the bases were the same. So you just added the powers to make 5 plus 3, which is 8. And that's actually how you multiply. That's actually why you get like x to the 8. Um, well, that's what they're doing here. When they have them being added, it's because the bases were the same. This, was, this problem is actually 9 to the first times 9 to the half. Because when they have the same bases, you add the powers. That's where this problem comes from. And what's 9 to the first power? 9. 9 to the half power, well, that's what we did over there. That's just doing a square root on a 9, which is 3. And when you multiply, you get 27. So that's actually a completely different approach to the same problem. It's instead of doing, you know, the, the radical 9 and then putting the power of 3, I can actually do <coughs> this, where I'm separating. This is actually using laws of exponents versus power rule versus radicals. So it's like three, four different ways to approach the same problem. The reason I'm showing you that is that it, knowing different approaches to the same problem actually makes certain problems easier. You're like, oh, I could approach this problem differently because I'm better at this versus maybe radicals versus power rule, you know, that type of thing. So I, I just wanted to show you um, different ways to do the same problem. I thought it was kind of interesting. Now, the reason why I bring this whole mess up is because when we get to the formulas that, um, for compound interest, it would require that you know how the powers work. Uh, that compound interest formula actually has like exponents in it, and we could put fractions and other things in there, and I want you to know what that means. So that you're not, you know, you're not, um, you're not confused why we're putting a fraction up there, and how to deal with it, and how to type a calculator in the first place. Okay, questions, comments? No, sir. Okay, now let's talk about simple interest. Okay. Um, so, simple interest. Now, we did this one yesterday. I want to talk about, you know, the difference between simple interest and compound. Um, I intro this yesterday, but I never really got to the point where I wanted to. And I want to show you the difference, like the main difference between payments. Um, that's what I want to discuss today. Now, let me start the camera here. What? My camera, um, cameras like digital cameras can only record for 29 minutes. Class is 35. So if I were to let it go, it would stop like rain. So you restart it and then I can record the whole class. So nice fish we got loaded. Okay. It's just a little bit. Stop. Sit. Okay. Alright, simple interest. So uh, the simple interest formula, just so you have it, is this. This is the one you're gonna want to write down. We didn't talk about this formula yesterday. I just want to introduce what simple interest was, the types of loans we can do. Okay, now, um, let's talk about what these, these letters mean. The letter A, that's the, that's the amount of interest you're going to pay. Um, it's the amount of interest, it's the charge that the bank or financial institution is going uh, um, to put on top of the, the amount of money that you're borrowing. So that's actually the amount you're going to pay extra for the loan you're going to take. The P in that formula is the principal amount. Okay, it's the principal amount, it's the initial amount of borrowed. Bye, ladies. Bye. Hey, Brooklyn? You want to take the camera and the tripod? I can take it for you. Are you guys leaving too? Oh, it's so much cooler. I don't know if I can. Just girls leave. And boys. Betty, bring my fridge. This is embarrassing. Betty, I can help you. You remember that? Yeah, right. I'm sure you are. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, the principal amount of money that you're borrowing for the loan, R, is the interest rate that they're going to charge you. And again, what we talked about yesterday was interest rate can change depending on what your credit score is. Um, it can also change depending on the financial institution. It can be completely different depending on what bank you go to. That's why they always say, if you're going to take a loan, shop around a little bit. Certain banks will offer better rates than others. Um, it's whether they want your business or not. They basically try to discourage you in some banks from borrowing money with them. Um, and then the T is in time. Um, that's time and time is in years. Um, that's the preferred number for this, so it's the number of years that you go. 
Um, now, when you talk about this yesterday, like if you're going to take out a loan, I think we'll, we didn't loan what five thousand dollars to my yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about that loan. Um, this hopefully this will, when we're going to talk about kind of different approaches at this. So a five thousand dollar loan. Let's say you were going to the bank to get this loan. You don't really have any, you know, credit history. So default loan, maybe it's three point five percent for interest rate, and maybe you're going to take that loan for four years, like kind of what I did. When I was in high school, like freshman year, I took a loan out for four years to pay off a car. Um, that was the way my parents wanted me to establish credit with my bank. Uh, so I paid off a car for four years during high school, and then the car was about five grand. It was forty four hundred bucks for a little truck that I bought. And so the idea is that if you want to know the amount of interest you're going to pay extra to the bank, the extra money that they're going to earn over four years, you multiply these numbers together: principal and rate times time. Okay. So we take 5,000 times, four is times 0 0.035, that's my interest rate as a decimal, and then times four years. Now, why four? It's because every year you're going to be charged interest. So if you're going for a four-year loan, you're, you're getting interest per year. That's why they call it annual interest rates. Um, so we it's multiply $7. this together. $7. It's $700. That's what I meant. Okay. I was so off of zero. It's 700 bucks. Okay? Um, and so that's the idea. So that's the extra charge that the bank is going to um, um, is gonna put on top of your loan. So really the amount of money that you're actually going to be paying the bank back is actually $5,700 over four years. Does that make sense? It's like a set charge that they're charging you. And then if you want to know like what your monthly payments are, you divide by how many months that was in that amount of time that you borrowed the money. So four years, you divide by 48 months because there's months a year. And this turns out to be like $118.75. Something like that. Okay. Now, for some people, it's like, that's 100 bucks, you know, 118 bucks. I can afford that. And maybe, you know, you're working at McDonald's and you're, you know, you're just working kind of during the week. That might be, that might be, a, you can actually afford that. Now, when I was in high school, uh, my truck payment was really close to that. It was like $106. Uh, but again, I was working, you know, a couple days throughout the week, even when I had sports and all this stuff, I, you know, I went to work went to sports, came back to work, that type of thing. But, you know, I that type of payment for me was kind of pushing it because I didn't work a lot of hours. So that was like maybe a two-week paycheck to, to get me there because I only put a couple hours in each week. Um, so that was something that I had to worry about. Like I had to make payment. I had to afford gas and insurance. I had to pay that myself. So that was, um, move time video and clear like Clear where Lake Toffee was. So it was awesome. But I, my the minimum wage back then was $5.25. Mm -hmm. So I had to work like, uh, I think I was working like 20 hours a week at there, and so I was doing homework there when I was actually working. So uh, because I had to go there, come back, go to a basketball game, go back and close, you know, that's what I was doing constantly for four years until I paid off that car. Um, yeah. So, um, but but the thing is, why I bring this up is because if you were to choose a different amount of years, the bank is actually charging you a different interest. What I mean by that is not that the interest rate will change. I'm talking about if you went three years instead, three years, now they're not going to charge you as much money. So now if I went for three years, that's $525. So that's less money. So my, my total that I'm going to pay back to the bank is now only $5,525 over three years. And when I divide by 36, because that's 36 months and three years, it's like a $158 payment. Now, for some people, they can't afford that. Like, this is the type of thing I do before I take a loan, if I need one. I'm always doing kind of numbers about can I afford it? Is it a little too much? Um, you know, the thing I always check, like, I don't want to pay the bank a lot of money, because if um, the whole point is, like, to uh, get charged the least amount of interest. Because that's extra money on top of the car that I didn't need in the first place. I could have just saved cash, bought the car in cash, and I wouldn't have to pay for the the extra financial charge for taking the loan out. That this extra money. Okay. But but the thing is about these loans, about simple interest. I know like up front when I'm paying over three, four years. That's it. I'm paying five thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars. That's what that's cut dry. That's what I'm paying. It's different if you are doing the compound loan. To give you the idea, my my student loans, right? I talked about this yesterday. I have about eighty-four thousand bucks worth of student loans when I graduated Iowa State, right? It was four four and a half years. It was like thirteen something thousand dollars a semester, okay? 
Um, so it came out to 84,000 with my with the interest already plugged in, and I had a really low interest rate. Um, my interest rate was like 1.7 percent locked in because I consolidated. I think Mr. Heemstra said the other day his interest when he graduated college was 7 percent. Oh my god! And that was normal because the recession hit, so the interest rate jacked up. I locked mine in at 1.7, so I got a little bit amount of money. But here's here's the sickening part: the difference between simple interest loans, right? This loan versus my, the compound, like a student loan, that's a compound interest or a credit card. You don't actually know what you're gonna finally pay until, it's, until your amount's all the way paid off. What I mean by that is my student loans roughly a month are about $1,000 a month. That's what I pay in my student loans. Okay? And, and so I'm paying that off until I pay it off. Okay? Because that's what my, that's what my student loan um, thing said was my minimum payment that I had to make it was a thousand bucks. Well, student loans are for 20 years. That's roughly, they always say, it's roughly a 20 year loan. Do they loan. tell you that, okay. like the bill? Or yeah, the stuff? first bill comes in six months after you graduate or you quit college. It comes in the mail and you don't even know it. Like you're just racking up money and then they send you your first bill like, hey, it's a thousand bucks a month now. So they send you a bill each month or do you just like <coughs> Every month, them? every month. I changed mine to wireless because I didn't like them printing out a bill. Because that bill comes in, it's thick. Huh. And so they show you everything you were charged over the four years you're at college. It's excessive. I just yeah. get the, the thing. But I'm paying a thousand bucks a month for twenty yeah. years. Now, how much were my student loans again? Eighty-four thousand, right? Do the math. That doesn't add up. No. no, because compound interest loans are different than that. I know what my financial charge was per month, and if I did the calculations for thirty-six months, I'd pay exactly the amount of money that I borrowed from the bank. Compound interest loans are completely different. Over 20 years, 12 months of a year, this is $240,000. There should be 350 So Yeah, it should be. It's not. Well, because compound interest loans, that's literally what I'm going to be paid. I'll be, my loans will be paid off in four years. That's what you're paying? That's, that's what I will, I will seriously have paid over my last 20 years. Okay. Because every month I don't pay off my student loans. They give me another financial charge, so it's extra money on top. So every month, there's extra money being tacked on my loan because I didn't pay it off. That's how. That's the difference between compound and simple. Simple, I, I know the upfront cost. Compound, you have to pay the bill off in, in in its entirety, or they bill whatever's left. So they're giving me my. It's like a 1.7%. Um, they're billing me that every month until I pay it off. So that's why this one is different. Because I'm paying that extra money every month until I can pay it off. Wouldn't that just be adding more time? Yeah, I have to pay that much. Seriously, that's what my bill comes in. Do you think it's more now? Oh yeah, I mean seven percent. So and that's a one percent. That's a one one point seven percent. That's what my that's what my financial institution said was my minimum payment. Um, now they if here's the difference here's the, and this is the shocking part. If I would have had $84,000 cash, I would have paid it, it would have been done. 80, exactly $84,000, I would have been done with my student loan. But I didn't. I still don't have that money, right? Because my parents said they're not paying my student loans. Now that was the thing with my parents. That's the way they established that I had to take a loan out to establish credit so I could get student loans in the first place. Because they told me they weren't paying. I paid my student loans, I paid my insurance, and that's how it works. So I had to take student loans out and I had to establish, you know, my monthly payments. Um, and that's the scary part, like, because I, I knew up front that I didn't have eighty-four thousand dollars. Some people have, they're lucky. Some parents help them out with their student loans. I, I didn't have that. I knew that. So this is the scary part. Like the numbers don't add up, and you know it, right? Because you have to worry about a compound interest. If you don't pay off the bill entirely, they bill you a charge every month and you're paying extra money. And so what the difference is here, this number, you're like, God, that is isn't 84,000. Subtract 84,000 from this. These are all the extra charges that I was getting charged per month added up over the 20 years. What is it? 156,000. 156,000 because I couldn't pay it off. The first time? The first time. It's crap, isn't it? It's just, it's a total scheme.
Yeah. Well, there are some people. So why would you do a quarter of a million dollars and you're spending for Can you do a simple interest? And it was an 84,000. What? Can you do simple interest for student loans? No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't. So it's, it's only considered, and those financial institutions, if you don't pay, um, it hurts your credit, and they're going to come in and they're going to take their money from you or the person that co signed with you. Uh, so they're going to get paid no matter what. What? A little bit of a tent underneath the tree. <laughs> yeah, so for 10 years. But I'm not trying to discourage you from college. I'm just saying that you need to be worried about that because I didn't think about it. You know, I was so worried about college and graduating and stuff because I knew I knew like going in I had to I had to graduate and I was gonna pay myself. So that was kind of my motivator, like I have to finish. I have to get a job, I know I have to pay it back. Like I couldn't quit. Like it was just I knew this was gonna be on top of me, like I have to pay it back at some point. So that's kind of my motivator. Like I need to get a job, I need to finish school, I need to get good grades. It was kind of that little extra motivator for me. But when that first bill comes, it's a shocker. Because I was not expecting it. Because I didn't think about it over the four years. I'm like, I didn't do the math, like what it's adding up to be. And then when that first bill comes, that was a tough pill to swallow when I opened that letter. And I was like, Wait, it's not just tuition. What? It's not just tuition. That was tuition, room and board, and um, and a food plan. But since plan. we get the Henshin fund, yeah, that, like that makes a big difference, right? Because that's that's taking whatever your well, that's taking whatever your your um, your yeah, your total number, your tuition, and you're subtracting you know, whatever you guys get, you get five thousand or something like that. I got zero scholarships. What about the best? Ones? I had zero scholarships, and I was a four point oh student in high school. Yeah. Zero money. So what about FAFSA? Because um, <laughs> we didn't have scholarships like that. We didn't have a pension fund. Well, I know you don't have a pension fund, but, but I wasn't. I wasn't a four I didn't. Um, my ACT wasn't in the thirties, so like I didn't get any financial aid for that, and I got accepted out of state. And your parents were. And, and the, that was the problem. Like my parents made too much money. Too much money. Yeah. Made too much money, and the worst part is you have to report their income yeah. on your on your fast. Why do they do that? So and here's the problem with that: that I, they're not helping me. Yeah. Why do I have to report their number? They already told me they're not paying it. And that hurt me. I couldn't get any scholarships that make too much money. That sucks. Um, that really sucks. That hurts. So the money so. you got for, my, I did my, my FAFSA and yep. my total was like 15000 Yep. Is that still money I just have to pay back? So that's like all the money. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you'll, you'll start adding up numbers. And it, and it hurts. Like that's why they always say you got to get done with college as fast as you can. Try to take summer classes. Try to do whatever you can. That's why, like, if I would have thought back, like, what I know now, I would have went to Niagara for two years. Because with a 4.0, I would have had a full ride at Niagara. But I didn't. I chose Iowa State because I knew where I wanted to go and the program that I wanted to be in. And I didn't think about, I didn't think about this. Like, that wasn't even on my radar. I didn't even think about it whatsoever. Looking back, I could have easily got, you know, some classes done at Niagara before going, or some smart community college. Didn't have to be Niagara. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, oh, jeez. And then I have to pay that. I'm done in like four and a half years with my student loans. And then I'll finally get about half my paycheck back for the first time. Like I'll actually get You'll the be back living. Cash. Well, then I can get, you know, if you think about it, it's like, I've been living on half my paycheck. You know, oh, for, yeah, not bad. Oh, but I mean, that means if I have half my paycheck back to me in cash, I can get double the house I want that I'm living in. Or I can get twice the amount of cars that I want. Right? Well, you're adopted. Yeah, that's yeah. so, um, yeah, that's little things you don't think about. Um, to give you this, I think I left, I left this concept, um, I think, yesterday. Um, I know a couple doctors in Mason City, Mercy Hospital, they, they're living on food stamps. They're on welfare. It's a doctor that's on welfare receiving food stamps. And they use them when they go to a grocery store. Because their student loans are more than $500,000. And so their amount of money, ex the amount of money that they have to pay in student loans exceeds their, their paycheck. So doctors aren't really rich. Until no, they not until they get their student loans paid off. That's why they're literally living on welfare until they get their student loans because they outweigh the amount of money that they get paid. That's why Mercy has problems finding doctors because their doctors aren't getting paid more than their student loans are. That's why they, you see these billboards going to like Clear Life Mentor that says, hey, recommend a doctor to Mercy and we'll give you $5,000 for finding us a doctor. On your doctor fees. Because they can't get anyone to sign with them because they don't pay enough. So if you can find somebody that will commit to them, they'll give you $5,000 cash for finding a doctor that will work there. 
because they can't get one. Do you acknowledge that it's broken? I mean, Bernie Sanders, I think, said it the best that it needs to be a complete <laughs> overhaul to that system. Um, yeah. You know, if you want to do a system where the, the U.S. government pays for you know the first couple of years of college for everybody because the system's broken, that would have been great. But as you're going to see from mine, can you imagine my bill on everyone's taxes? Yeah. That you're paying my tuition, let alone the 200 million other kids that are going to college? Especially those Ivy Leagues? You're going to tell me that mm -hmm. their, their bills on my taxes? Oh, well, see, I don't think that I don't think that college should be free. No, it wouldn't be. It's just you're going to pay in taxes. No, I don't think college should be free for. I don't think college should be free for like yeah. college agree. kids or anybody. I think that I think that it should be like half. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the problem out. is too is that those 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 colleges are trying to pay all their professors. They're trying to pay the electricity bills. They're trying to pay for those buildings that they're putting up. And that's why colleges rely so much on their sports programs, because their sports programs are actually profitable. Everything else isn't. <laughs> um, so, and that's that's the hard part. The system is completely messed up. But I'm trying to show you these numbers now. What is there a better way? I mean, what's what? the better way? I don't know. I don't have that. Yeah. Um, but um, it? yeah, it's 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 a tough system. Now, this is simple interest. What I was showing you a little bit with my student loans, that's compound. That has a completely different formula. That's the formula we're going to look on Monday. So why do you think that they don't let students have simple interest? Simple interest loans? Um, yeah, um, you, the prop, I think the main reason why they wouldn't do something like that is, um, is that that amount of money is too great to borrow and to pay back over a short number of times, um, short number of years, that that the charge that you get charged compoundedly every month charge, that's paying that institution to put money back into those accounts because you're borrowing a large amount of money, not a small amount. Small amounts can be manageable. You know, banks can do a little bit of money. Yeah, exactly. Way bigger loans because that amount of money is harder to make back. That's why they do extra charges to pay those people that they borrow that money back faster. And so that's why they do it. Okay, that was too loud. But I feel like an idiot now because I'm going to Iowa right away. No, I don't want to scare people off from doing that, but you've got to be like, kind of like, you have to be aware of the kind of charges you're about to set yourself. That's why I do this for the seniors. So, question. Did you pay some of your pockets up front? Yeah. That's a, that's, a, that's a big difference. You know, making sure that you can pay off certain things without taking that student loan. That's why some people, like, they get a job during college. I, I was doing that in my last, my last year, the, the final fifth year. Um, I got a job and I was paying off those student loans so I wouldn't have to borrow on it. But, I, but the problem is, like, 13 grand a semester. I can't make 13 grand a year with the amount of, like, book work that I had plus, you know, working a 40-hour week at yeah, and I, I I don't I don't know how I can wrap my head around like and I know that some of these like bigger colleges will give you like they'll give you some scholarships, but it brings it back to the level playing field with the major universities yeah. around here. So it, like that scholarship if you're going to South Dakota, right? They're gonna give you a loan that will bring that twenty six thousand dollar, you know, um, tuition per semester. It's going to bring you back down to Iowa State's level. Like we, get, we get in-state tuition there now. In-state, in yeah. so that's nice. So if they give you a loan, that will bring it back down to normal, like normal-ish, right? But then that difference you still have to pay. So you got to kind of add up. And you, um, if you have those numbers, we can plug those in on Monday into the formula I'm going to show you. And we can, be, we can see what is going to be your total in the very end of that four and a half hours of that. Hey, That's why I'm going to show you this stuff. She got offered a transfer to UNI, but they didn't offer enough money, so she's not. Does she yeah. hate it? Does she hate it? Yeah. Like, absolutely hate it? Well, she's like, it's like tolerable, but she's like.